Blessed be the holy and undivided Trinity, one God. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we, who cannot exist without you, may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. After these events, the Lord's word came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your protector. Your reward will be very great. But Abram said, Lord God, what can you possibly give me since I still have no children? The head of my household is Eliezer, a man from Damascus. He continued, since you haven't given me any children, the head of my household will be my heir. The Lord's word came immediately to him. This man will not be your heir. Your heir will, be, will definitely be your own biological child. Then he brought Abram outside and said, look up at the sky and count the stars if you think you can count them. He continued, this is how many children you will have. Abram trusted the Lord, and the Lord recognized Abram's high moral character. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Let us say together Psalm 33. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. Happy the people he has chosen to be his own. The Lord looks down from heaven and beholds all the people of the world. From where he sits enthroned, he turns his gaze 
on all who dwell on the earth. He fashions all the hearts of them and understands all their works. There is no king that can be saved by a mighty army. A strong man is not delivered by his great strength. The horse is a vain hope for deliverance, for all its strength cannot save. Behold, the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who wait upon his love, to pluck their lives from death and to feed them in the time of famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. Indeed, our heart rejoices in him, for in his holy name we put our trust. Let your loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us, as we have put our trust in you. A reading from the book of Hebrews. Faith, faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. By faith, we understand that the universe has been created by a word from God so that the visible came into existence from the invisible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was going to receive as an inheritance. He went out without knowing where he was going. By faith, he lived in the land he had been promised as a stranger. He lived in tents along with Isaac and Jacob, who were co-heirs of the same promise. He was looking forward to a city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith, even Sarah received the ability to have a child, though she herself was barren and past the age for having children, because she believed that the one who promised was faithful. So descendants were born from one man, and he was as good as dead. There were as many as the number of the stars in the sky, and as countless as the grains of sand on the seashore. All these people died in faith without receiving the promises. But they saw the promises from a distance and welcomed them. They confessed that they were strangers and immigrants on the earth. People who say this kind of thing make it clear that they are looking for a homeland. If they had been thinking about the country that they had left, they would have had the opportunity to return to it. But at this point in time, they are longing for a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God isn't ashamed to be called their God. He has prepared a city for them. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Don't be afraid, little flock, because your Father delights in giving you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to those in need. Make for yourselves wallets that don't wear out, a treasure in heaven that never runs out. No thief comes near here, and no moth destroys. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps lit. Be like people waiting for their master to come home from a wedding celebration, who can immediately open the door for him when he arrives and knocks on the door. Happy are those servants whom the master finds waiting up when he arrives. I assure you that when he arrives, he will dress himself to serve, seat them at the table as honored guests, and wait on them. Happy are those whom he finds alert, even if he comes at midnight or just before dawn. But know this, if the homeowner had known what time the thief was coming, he wouldn't have allowed his home to be broken into. You also must be ready because the human one is coming at a time when you don't expect him. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Today I will be interweaving some of today's scriptural themes with the discussion of some Christian formation plans coming up in the next few months, beginning with Vacation Bible School. This year, our VBS program is entitled Calvary Folk School VBS 2022 after Campbell Folk School and their focus on indigenous crafts. So as it sounds, in addition to our Bible stories, there will be focus on crafts that are indigenous to the Asheville region. Our program will start in the Lord's Acre community, in the community garden. On Monday and Tuesday, the campers will water the pollinator flowers and look for items to put in their stepping stones. And on Wednesday and Thursday, led by Master Gardener Doug Kearney, who we all know, they will learn all about the new beehive and will harvest squash, cucumbers, and tomatoes. Our stories will include two from the Old Testament and two from the New Testament. And you'll be hearing much of what you've heard the last two weeks in our Old Testament lesson about Abraham and Sarah becoming the father and mother of the people of Israel, which will become a light to all nations and will be guided by covenant relationship with Yahweh unto eternity. The second story will be that of Jeremiah and the potter's wheel. The campers will work with terracotta clay to make hanging decorations and pinch pots. Their work will be fired in a kiln at Odyssey Kilns in the River Arts District. And working with clay, of course, can be a symbol of being formed by Christ over a lifetime, just as God breathed into clay to form us in Genesis. The New Testament stories will be a modern adaptation of the prodigal son called the Parable of Two Sons, which includes a mother and a happier ending for the older brother. He too is given a feast he most certainly deserves. And Peter and the dream will teach the lesson of inclusivity all are invited to relationship with Christ. Related art projects will be making stepping stones, a symbol for our various stages along the way of our spiritual journey, and weaving on a real loom, plus making potholders to take home. 
Weaving is a wonderful symbol for the diverse tapestry of humanity and of God's creation. Children will learn how we are all connected and responsible for caring for the earth and one another. Day five will be the day most revered by the children, water day and outdoor games. And they get to improvise stories and interact with the puppets and share some of the music which they have learned. We invite folks to help lead in various ways during Vacation Bible School, because where the treasure of our personal gifts of personality are, our hearts are also. Everyone who has volunteered for Vacation Bible School has an innate spirit of joy, and the well of joy within is refilled big time every summer at Vacation Bible School. Betty Robbins and Callie Otten are devoted storytellers and love to help with everything from music to art and to decorating the space. Father Jay will play the voice of God whenever needed. Uh, Becky Lowry is a talented singer and guitarist. She's not here today, but she's in our choir, and she loves to share all kinds of songs with all ages. And she'll also teach handbells, which were given to Calvary by a parishioner and choir member named Kim Masters. He's in Ireland right now. And we hope to continue to have a children's bell choir in the fall based on their enthusiasm. Sally Farmer is a talented weaver and will talk to the children about her weaving and show some of her work. And the children will, as I said, take home their uh, traditional pot holders. Parents of the campers will be shepherds one day of the week and provide a simple sum summer supper and join us for the meal. Where necessary, other devoted parishioners who like to cook will step in, like Martha Vining and Bob Robbins and Jimmy and Barry King. Many parents work so they are having an evening program and can't always do everything. We will be utilizing the entire campus from um, when they arrive. Well, they'll be going to the uh, Lord's Acre Community Garden, then to the parish hall, then to the rota rotations classroom. So all to provide safe and fun ways to learn about God's love for us, our love for God, and to nurture friendship in Christian community. It is not too late to sign up your children, your ch grandchildren, your friends' children, your neighbors' children. We'll be here tomorrow at 4 p.m. and sign you up. So I'm also hoping to continue to find ways to engage in scripture and the arts for all ages during the fall Christian formation programs. So what is the purpose of the arts in ministry and in the world? I imagine we could have a discussion for many afternoons on that point and there'd be a variety of correct answers. And here are some of mine. So last Wednesday at our healing service, we discussed the work of three 16th century artists of woodcuts. Albrecht Durer is the most well-known and a favorite artist of Cornelius Vanderbilt. Much of Durer's work can be seen here at the Biltmore Estate. Another point of interest is that since woodcuts are printed, the middle class was suddenly able to collect affordable artwork for their own homes, broadening the expectations of who could see and own and converse about the art of the day. Matthias Grunewald painted as well, and we looked at the work he is most famous for, the Eisenheim altarpiece, which shows Christ's birth and crucifixion and helps us to understand both the physicality and the mysticism of these sacred events. And Lucas Cranach the Elder, painter and master of the woodcut, is famous for his portraits of Martin Luther, as well as his illustrations in the first printed German New Testament Bible in 1522. The point here is that the arts, specifically the art of the 16th century Germany, reflected what was going on in culture, from the profound development of the Protestant Reformation, deep respect for Christian religious themes, and the beginning of the movement of social and cultural activity from solely in the church to the home. As I mentioned a few weeks ago, art can also help restore dignity in a culture of, of polarized politics and hate speech based on those who want to cultivate fear of the other. Makoto Fujimara writes in his book, Art and Faith, something we will hopefully look at together in the fall, a culture, a culture of fear has never produced great culture. We do not create great art in response to fear and anxiety. 
We create great art by loving culture, loving the stories and materials from which to create art. We create art by having faith to love our neighbors as ourselves and even love our enemies at times. We must remember that a cultural estuary is a heterogeneous environment. As we journey through a polarized culture, even if we cannot find common ground, we can still find a way to value differences and heed the call to love." Unquote. So common life is different from common ground. Common ground is an effort to find some space within the continuum of opinion on a public policy issue where opposing sides have some something in common. It is nearly impossible to find that patch in today's environment. And if it exists, those who stand there are ripped to pieces, in other words, slandered, trivialized, and misrepresented purposely by both sides so that neither side can gain any political ground. Common life, on the other hand, assumes pluralistic diversity and yet affirms that these differences can be a basis of abundant cultural estuaries. Caring rejuven rejuvenates culture by aspiring to a greater good, actively mediating and guiding people through the darkness of injustice. So to nurture this soil of culture, we must learn to see with the eyes of our hearts, as it says in Ephesians 1.18, beyond fear, beyond anxiety, beyond despair. We need to be patient, to love deeply through these differences, nurture the soil of imagination that seeks to understand the other. Maybe then, out of the trauma of our times and disillusionment of our days, God will birth something new and good. Last week, I went with Haley to the Asheville Art Museum. Haley is my daughter, and she visited me from LA for one week, and we did a lot of fun Asheville cultural things. Plus, we went tubing <laughs> down the Green River. On the first floor is an exhibit called Border Cantos, and is a collaboration between American photographer Richard Misrock and Mexican-American artist and composer Guillermo Galindo. They explore the complexity of the United States-Mexican uh, border through photography, sculpture, and sound, inviting us to bridge boundaries and initiate conversations. The instruments are made of various found objects and are there for both sculpt sculptures and instruments. There are interactive pieces like a string map where individuals can connect their ancestral roots on the global map to where they live today. By recognizing that everyone in our nation came from somewhere else, including the Native Americans who came over the Bering Strait, we perhaps can see borders like we do when flying overhead in an airplane. Of course, we don't see them at all. We do not see natural geographical lines between countries and states at all. Borders only exist on human-made maps. So what if we saw our Earth with an imagination without borders? Who wouldn't be our neighbor? Then we could begin a conversation about how to love our neighbor, how to love our enemies, all things Jesus directed us to do. So this fall, we hope to engage children and adults during our Christian formation time in discussion of works of art, drama, and or music to participate as a group in creative activities. Might we use the parish hall as a place to make and display collective projects that speak to the things that our hearts are holding, to add color and meaning to a space, and to know we had a part in the process, then making way for important conversation about what is going on in our times and where and how we are called to respond. Wrestling with scripture, our current events, our personal lives, perhaps we will communicate things to one another that cultivate culture instead of culture war. Ideas that will build community, heal in ways that we were not aware we needed to be healed. Just by sharing an artistic endeavor together, just by being present to hear something someone said that had nothing to do with you but had everything to do with you. An inner conflict resolved. A way of understanding something difficult to comprehend from another angle. A way to allow for forgiveness and grace. A way to celebrate exciting benchmarks and new growth at Calvary. Here are some specific ideas. Arts for every kid. Continuing what we are doing this next week at Vacation Bible School, 
to work with biblical storytelling, clay and weaving and other crafts, and maybe call it Terrific Tuesdays or Wonderful Wednesdays and form a time that is easier for parents to get to than Sunday mornings. Arts for every adult, maybe studying Picasso's famous anti-war painting, Guernica, and making a large abstract mural on canvas that allows us to place our horror of 21st century aggression and imperialism. Adding an authentic medieval miracle play to the current Christmas pageant that tells the beloved story of Jesus' birth from the point of view of Joseph, who tells the story with quite a sense of humor, as you can imagine. Maybe read a 50-day creation care Bible challenge and perhaps end with a wilderness retreat at Lake Logan. There is so much we can do so that when people walk into Calvary Episcopal Church, people would be inspired by all the color and creativity around them and all the exciting programs and would want to be a part of this mar marvelous energy. What would we hope to gain by engaging in the arts even if we never did anything like this before? Perhaps new ways of seeing, new ways of being together, new ways of serving God at Calvary will come to the fore. I hope we will find even deeper friendship and camaraderie in these activities and a greater awareness of where we are being called to make a difference in our families and communities as we grow and are formed and molded in Christ. This fall, let's engage in a period of discernment through our Christian formation offerings, out of which can grow renewed ministries and new ministries guided by the Holy and Creative Spirit. Amen. I invite you to stand now as you are able in anticipation of the human one that is coming when we least expect it. Let us remember the stories of our faith that guide us in that way. We believe in one God, Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, to whom all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, became incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, and he suffered death. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now kneeling, seated, or standing as you wish, let us offer our prayers to God. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. 
For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Jose, our bishop, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. And now let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray now to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand as you are able. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. You may be seated. In your bulletin today, you'll see that we have announcements for upcoming August events. The prayer square and prayer shawl ministry is on the first and third Monday, so that will be next Monday. We have the summer evensong service on August 21st at 6 p.m. And if you were here last Sunday, the kind of music you heard last Sunday morning, you will likely hear at our evensong services once a month. There's a food pantry update here, which has some really marvelous information, and I just want to highlight a few things that since the beginning of the summer, we've harvested close to half a ton of fresh vegetables to serve our neighbors. That's just an incredible amount of food. So let's give it up for the people who are involved in the food pantry. They, there's also a, a paragraph about the many groups that help out at the uh, community garden. And St. James Episcopal Church in Henderson had a food drive and raised, uh, collected 252 pounds of food and baby diapers. And there are um, people who are very appreciative of those additions to our pantry food shelves. And last week, we welcomed 114 households representing 363 individuals and seven new families. So we should be very proud of all the people who do so much all week long and on Saturdays to provide food for our neighbors who need it. Um, Jay is on vacation. He will be back in the office tomorrow. Now may we walk in love as God loved us and Christ as Christ loved us and sacrifice himself for us in love and joy. In Jesus' name we pray.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. From before time, you made ready the creation. Your spirit moved over the deep and brought all things into being, sun, moon, and stars, earth, winds, and waters, and every living thing. You made us in your image and taught us to walk in your ways, but we rebelled against you and wandered far away. And yet, as a mother cares for her children, you would not forget us. Time and time again, you called us to live in the fullness of your love. And so this day, we join with saints and angels in the chorus of praise that rings through eternity, lifting our voices to magnify you as we sing. Praise to you, holy and living God, to deliver us from the power of sin and death and to reveal the riches of your grace. You looked with favor upon Mary, your willing servant, that she might conceive and bear a son, Jesus, the holy child of God. Living among us, Jesus loved us. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, healed the sick, and proclaimed good news to the poor. He yearned to draw all the world to himself, yet we were heedless to his call to walk in love. Then the time came for him to complete upon the cross the sacrifice of his life and to be glorified by you. On the night before he died for us, Jesus was at table with friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke it, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and again he gave thanks to you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of it, do this in remembrance of me. Now gathered at your table, O God of all creation, and remembering Christ, crucified and risen, who was and is and is to come, we offer to you our gifts of bread and wine and ourselves, a living sacrifice. Pour out your spirit upon these gifts that they may be the body and blood of Christ. Breathe your spirit over the whole earth and make us your new creation, the body of Christ given for the world you have made. In the fullness of time, bring us with all your saints from every tribe and language and people and nation to feast at the banquet prepared from the foundation of the world. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ to keep you in eternal life.
please stand as you are able. We continue our worship on page 11 of your bulletin. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved, let us go now in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 